I'm going to introduce you now to a band called Punch the Sky, who describe their style as world music infused with party rock. Enjoy. <laughs> quite late last night and it was really good fun what did you think about Sam Sweeney it was it was very good it's very sort of atmospheric music um, something you can sort of listen to and and, and just that nothing really else about the mm. music there were four musicians mm. I think in total yes there were the four there was so there was double bass um, there was a acoustic guitar electric guitar and uh, Sam Sam Sweeney on playing, the playing violin, so on the fiddle. Mm. Um, yeah, it was it was nice to get to know some of the band members and a bit more about them, a bit more sort of about their sense of humour, that kind of thing. So mm. Sam was Sam was very fun. He had a very self-deprecating kind of humour, didn't he? He mentioned that his the clothes that he was wearing at the time looked like nineteen uh, nineties art attack because it was very bright and colourful. I thought that was very funny. This was actually the first time I'd listened to some of his music because it was we were familiar with him um with his work with Bellowhead, um but sort of the first time we got to listen to him as a as a solo artist really. Hmm. Um and there was there was actually a song in there that we, we really sort of liked the first time I'd ever heard it. Um it's on his new album. Hmm. Um that we may be thinking at some point to have played at our wedding sometime. Yeah, it would be really nice. And we kind of, the music came on and we thought, actually, this would be a really good song to walk down the aisle to. So mm -hmm. it was really nice to, to kind of have that moment, especially because it's a moment that we shared together that we might use yeah. later down the line. So it has significance, which is nice. Yeah. We liked the album so much that at the end of the set, we actually went and bought the uh, LP record for it. Perfect. And it was a limited edition record and it's got a red vinyl, which is really, really cool. And yeah, well, I've listened to it. You haven't had the chance yet, but I really love it. And it's one of those moments where you listen to the music that you heard live and it's really exciting because you're like, oh, I remember what happened at that part. So mm -hmm. it was really nice. Yeah. Nice sort of associated memories with it, really. It sort of, it means something more than just buying a record off the, uh, off the the store or something yeah so we'll play a little bit of the video footage from sam sweeney from <laughs> Bellowhead, where do we where do we begin? It was very impressive, wasn't it? There was eleven instrumentalists. There was. And all of the members of Bellowhead are multi instrumentalists. Mm, so all very talented. They each played about I don't know, on average about three instruments each. It was that ridiculous. It was apart from apart from Benji who played about six different guitars. It was sort of every new song yeah, was a new one had... being tuned and brought out for him, which was Guitar, Very impressive to get used to it. So. Guitar, lute, um, banjo, in all various, mm -hmm. I don't know, acoustic and electric versions of yeah. all of them. So it was very impressive. I really liked the um, 
I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's a tuba. Tuba. Might ah, be a tuba. There we go. I've dredged that up from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, correct us if we're wrong, yeah. but that was really cool. They kind of remind me of snails. Uh, like in the in the shell, oh, yes, I yeah. like them. Yeah, it was really nice to see live. They sounded like I want to say exactly the same as the record, but it was better because it was live. Mm. But they were as good as obviously the the best recordings. Mm. And so so worthy of seeing, definitely. It was really nice to see all of the small details that you you don't like listen to. You usually. get you get so much more of a. A visual performance as well as a you know an audio performance through the with a concert mm. which you just don't get obviously from from listening on, exactly on a phone or headphones yeah. so my favorite moment was about the humor that bellowhead had actually mm. they had a very kind of quite a dry sense of humor wasn't it really dry british humor uh my mm. favorite part was when they just finished a song and then they shouted to the audience Right, who wants to hear a sea shanty about the British involvement with the American Civil War? And all the crowd were like, yes! <laughs> so it was very funny because you just, you wouldn't expect that. No. Um, they had very good uh, kind of showmanship, didn't they? Mm. Um, so they knew, yeah, they knew how to, to entertain as much as to perform. Yeah. Um, which I, I don't know if it sounds more sort of like a cheap compliment, but it sounds, it was, yeah. It was, it was very good. good. It was very good. They had a lovely moment where they did a tribute to one of the band members who passed away earlier this year and they had this recording of him singing and it was I was very impressed by the, the recording actually. Mm -hmm. They all joined in singing along with the guy who had passed away. Mm -hmm. and yeah, very very genuine. You could sort of really understand their kind of their kind of thoughts and feelings. It felt like they took you on a journey with them throughout the whole performance. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, I think the best thing about seeing live music is that you get to see and understand a lot more about the musicians and the stories behind the albums. And mm -hmm. obviously you can do that, but then you'd have to, if you did that for every song you listen to, you'd have to spend a long time. Mm -hmm. but, then, but then songs take on more of a meaning than, than just sort of good music after a while. They sort of become something more than that. Too. Yeah. And I think... The funniest moment, I think we can both agree on the funniest moment of the uh, the concert. Slightly, slightly surreal as well as being funny, I think. Though. Yeah, they yeah. they sang a song called Black Beetle Pie, and this is Bellowhead. So if you get the chance to have a listen to the song, especially the last few seconds of the song, it's an absolutely crazy song about a, a lady who makes mm. black beetle pies. And it was just very surreal. It was I very to, funny. I want to know the truth behind it because oh, yeah, you know, knows what is based on that? Who knows? And they had this guy, who it's the first time I've ever seen it. It was a glockenspiel, and instead of it being on a stand, he had it kind of balancing on his legs, standing up with a bit of like a, a belt to keep it on, yeah. and he was mm -hmm. kind of like. Bouncing along the side, side to side, playing yeah, the, the like Glockenspiel, yeah, and it was really. and it was ridiculous. Mm. I wondered what on earth was going on. I had no idea what mm. we'd gone to see, but it was brilliant. When it, so mm -hmm. my stomach was hurting from laughing because yeah. honestly, we just it was. it was one of those pinch me moments where we we're like, "Am I really seeing this?" Because yeah, mm. it was really funny. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you some footage now. Uh, we didn't film everything because we were enjoying it too much to be filming, but this is some snippets of what we did film. Enjoy.